For today, we're going to put a sound decoder in this Caddo ES44AC. The decoder I'm going to use is Trax's decoder selector. Uh, I'm going to go into here and I'm going to search for Digitrax decoder selector. Press enter and you'll see I get a bunch of stuff. The first one is Digitrax decoder selector. Comes up like this. I select a scale, end scale. I select a brand, it's Caddo. I select an engine and it's an ES44AC Jivo. Comes back and says here's three products uh, that will uh, that can be used. This first one is a mobile decoder. There's a picture of it over here. The 144K1E. Here's a picture of it over there. It says it's a sound FX. Uh, DCC ready release after 2010. Frame modification required. And then if you look at the SDXN146K1E, which is the one that I'm going to install, it says frame modification required as well, uh, but I don't do any frame modification, so I'll show you how that works. This is the newer one, and if you look at the newer one and go to the information on it here, it shows a 10 millimeter by 18 millimeter oval speaker. And if I go back to here and look at the old version, and click on details you'll see somewhere here it's a 13 millimeter round speaker the problem is the 13 millimeter round speaker won't fit in the body that of the ES44 AC so the one we're going to use today is this guy being newer you see that's 85 US whereas the old one is 70 US so there's $15 difference on that. All of the ones that I had have already been installed but what this has is it's shorter overall it has a smaller capacitor even though the capacitor is the same size it's still a smaller one. This speaker is an oval one now and it's only 11 millimeters wide whereas the prior one was circular and the circular one was 13 mil. Why that's important is because where we're going to put this guy in this shell is only 11 mil across here. It won't fit a 13 mil. So if you're going to put a 13 mil, you'll need to mill out the bottom of the frame here in order to get it in. The other thing I found out is that Digitrax has upgraded this decoder so now when you turn the power on the engine will react right away instead of waiting for a power up sequence. That's important because if you're running different types of locos, some that do and some that don't and you ever get a short, then the shorted one sits there for, I don't know, uh, 15 seconds going through its power up sequence and uh, the other locals are busy trying to pull it. In any case, we're going to go through the install of this. That's the front light, that's the rear light. First up, let's remove the frame. The easy way to remove the frame is take the engine and put the edge right underneath the plate here like this, the edge of this and then you drop it and out it pops and put this away for now if you were really quick in watching what happened you would have saw a little black piece, piece go fluttering off that would be the snow plow and so I'll go through the junk on the side here and come back with the snow plow and uh, we'll put the snow plow back on so we don't forget it or lose it or something it is just some pins that press in
thusly on this engine. So the plow's back on the front now. No, that method doesn't work for every engine out there, but it works well on these. This is the analog PCB that's been in there. And so what we need to do is, in order to slide it out, I, I grab where I, whenever I can by the two motor contacts. I figure that's the firmest area. So we'll hold the frame and we'll pull back and then pull up. Be very careful of this guy and of course its corresponding friend over on that side. What we now have to do is transfer these two motor clips from here to here. And yeah. this is two paint sticks that you buy from any store. And I have a piece of tape taped on backwards here uh, to provide some stickiness. It's wearing through pretty much. But that happens to be, let me move this aside, the right size for that to go on. So now I can easily go in there pull a bit on here as I'm attempting to melt that solder. You want it nice and clean and silvery because then it conducts heat better. And so for this, all we're going to do is heat this area where there's solder. Let's see if that shows up better. Applying heat to the solder and as it melts, pull it off. And there you have the little contact. It'll be hot. Uh, now we have soldering iron. We have this guy, which maybe. Now we have to do a bit of prep work on this. And the things that need to be done. Of course, these clips have to be soldered in. Uh, I need to do a little work on this LED. When you look at the cross section of the LED, you'll see there's a bit of a bump in here and here, and that interferes with how I'm going to put the speaker in and the top here. And so I want to grind that down. You can use a file, whatever you want. I have a Dremel, so I'm going to do that now so I don't forget. Enter Mr. Dremel. Okay, that's, I think, enough for now. Let me double check here close up. And it is definitely flatter. You just want to make sure you don't carve into the little LED inside. So, okay, from here, we are going to remove the little strip of Kapton tape that's there. Because this is for use in another spot, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now, when I pull this off, I normally just stick it on my board, my cutting mat here. The place we want to put it is right here. We don't want, when these are soldered on, they'll come through at the bottom here and they would normally touch along there. If they do then you'll get a short. And so you need to have a strip of Kapton that goes across the top there. Which is close to half of the piece I just took off. So let me cut that. Come back place it on here. Yeah, that's pretty much how I want it. It's a little off, so let's just redo that. Do it like that. Comes down like that. Using a little piece of wood to burnish that in place. And I go over the side and do the same thing. 
fact I tuck it up underneath the motor as well so that whole area is protected do the same on the other side okay incidentally to give you a little more of a rundown of how this is going to work this guy slides in like this okay I'm going to put this speaker back here yeah we worry about the wires we'll get them out of the way uh, that's going to go in there like that the issue you now have is this capacitor while it's smaller than the one that comes with the other board it's not small enough to fit under there and you can see the wires aren't long enough to get it back there it's actually designed to fit up front here but the problem you have trying to do that if you look in here is you'd have to cut away and modify the light pipes in order to do that rather than do that I get a surface mounted capacitor these capacitors which I picked up off uh, eBay or Amazon you need to do a, a, a search this is a hundred microfarad capacitor these are hundred microfarad these are 16 volts I would have liked 24 volt but they're a lot larger 16 volts I shouldn't be running any more than 16 volts on my layout I normally run the highest one is 14 volts I believe so I do have a bit of leeway and they're manufactured with tolerances and if they do go up it'll be apparently really quite interesting a little explosion some smoke some fire uh, hopefully if that ever happens I have a camera available anyway I will need one of these I put these in a number of locos and so far haven't had any issues again you'll need some soldering skills with these So I'll put that aside. Oh, and I just have regular hookup wire that I use. Looks like that. So we'll get on to doing that assembly in a bit. In the meantime, what I'd like to do is solder these guys on. In order to do that, I want to tin this area here where they're going to solder to, and I'm going to tin these here two pads those pads slide through like that so this will end up fitting like that but they're not the tightest fit so just a little bit of solder on those pads helps a whole bunch in order to tin all that stuff we'll tack it down to there I'll grab a little bit of flux just to touch on there Now be careful when you solder on these front guys here because if you get too much on then it's hard to insert. So let's just get a little bit, don't touch any other components. Yeah, that's enough on there. And let's do these guys. Yeah. Just want a little on it. The way these are set up is if you look there's a little clip on the bottom and two clips on the top so you can't put too much solder on there because if you do then uh, it's clips not going to fit in the other thing is get a cloth here I got just a little piece and I'll just wipe this in case there's any flux that may have I don't put much on but still 
And then, now the next thing to look at is, this is going to fit in like this. And if you look at the pickup tab here, you'll see it's in line with this. I have to be careful. I don't want one of these tabs to be too far forward or it would contact that. And if it contacts that, that's a short. So, knowing that, I want this to be inserted as kind of as far back as is practical on here. So when I do it, line it up and it's got a little solder blob on it. Let me just do the other one here for now. There. You may not be able to see that but I, I line that up right at the back edge of that so that the back part of that contact is along that back edge there. And then you put this on here like this. And I grab my heat sink so I don't burn my fingers. Put my heat sink on there. Make sure that's all in place. Come in with the soldering iron. You'll see the solder flow underneath. 